Um, well, as uh, Casey said, I'm Robin Greiner. I'm down here from Chicago today, um, from Axion, and we are a nonprofit micro lender. Um, and we are an alternative lending organization uh, that's dedicated to providing credit and other business services to small business owners who don't have access to traditional sources of capital. Um, by encouraging the economic self-reliance of micro-entrepreneurs throughout Illinois and Northwest Indiana, uh, we help businesses and communities thrive. You may have heard of micro-lending. Um, typically, uh, it is known about as Axion International, and also you may have heard of uh, Mohammed Yunus and Grameen Bank. Um, and that has a group lending model, typically, where small amounts of money are provided to um, create a business opportunity for um, groups of typically women in developing uh, nations. Axion International was founded in 1961 by a Berkeley, UC Berkeley law student. Um, it began as a student-run uh, volunteer pro project in Caracas, Venezuela. That is where uh, the name Axion comes from. It means action in Spanish. Um, Axion has grown uh, since then, is now uh, one of the premier microfinance organizations in the world. There's a network of lending partners that Axion International has in Latin America, Africa, Asia, and in the US. Um, about 20 years ago, um, the, they decided, well, why not bring the microfinance model to a first world economy and see if it can work? There had to be some changes, however. It couldn't, the, the group lending model didn't quite work in the same way um, because we had an infrastructure. We had a lot of uh, rules. We had contract law. We had all kinds of things that um, made it better to do individual loans instead of group loans that rely on more on social pressure um, and, and cooperation to get the loan paid. Um, Axion uh, has a, a U.S. network, um, and it's the largest uh, micro-lending network in the country. It's made up of five partner uh, individual 501c3 organizations, of which Axion Chicago is one. The other members include Axion East and Online, Axion Texas and Louisiana, Axion New Mexico, Colorado, and Arizona, and Axion San Diego. So we represent 75% of all micro lending that happens in the United States. Uh, combined, since we've been together, uh, we've lent $380 million to nearly 48,000 in 48,000 48, loans since 1991. Now, you may wonder, what, what is a micro loan? It's, it's actually defined as a loan that is under $50,000. Um, any loan that is above $50,000 is considered by, by banks and the Treasury Department as a small business loan. So it really does have a distinction. Um, so not, you know, the, the global microloans you hear about, sort of maybe $25 can help somebody uh, get a cow and do some milking and create a business there. That doesn't really fly in the States. You can barely buy three gallons of milk for that kind of money. So anyway, um, micro businesses represent about 92% of all businesses in the United States. They're the engine of economic growth in any community. Um, and yet 10.8 million micro entrepreneurs are essentially locked out of the traditional credit markets because banks don't lend below $100,000 typically. Why don't they? Because it's not profitable, that's why. I mean, they can, you know, it, it takes a lot of effort to make a loan, and they can, you know, make more money if they make a $150,000 loan than a $10,000 loan or even a $50,000 loan. So it depends on your point of view, I suppose, as to whether this is a market failure or the market is working just as it should. Um, in my personal view, it's a market failure because there are a lot of uh, opportunity to create an engine of economic growth through the small business loan needs. Um, so, and with the uh, tightening of credit that's happened in the, the recent years, 
um, the ranks of the underbanked, we'll call them. That's a sort of a wonky term, but known as the underbanked people who either can't access credit or don't have a bank account. So those ranks have really grown. Um, and organizations like Axion fill the, the, the gap in this market. So a few quick facts about Axion. We represent, Axion Chicago is now I'm going to be speaking about in particular. We represent 90% of the microloan volume in Illinois and in Northwest Indiana. Uh, the US Treasury has uh, certified us as a community development financial institution, or a CDFI. Uh, we are uh, certified by the Small Business Adm Administration as a micro lending intermediary. And we also, um, certify other partners to do remote lending for Axion. Um, a couple more quick facts. Uh, uh, since 94, which is when we we're founded, we're about to celebrate our 20 year anniversary, um, we've made 3,300 small business loans totaling $27 million. Last year, uh, we closed 430 loans, and this year we expect to close 500 loans. Average loan size is only $8,400, and yet a loan that size, um, on average, generates or maintains three jobs. That allows them, you know, if the loan is for working capital, maybe they need to, you know, buy a new uh, salon chair in a hair salon, and then that enables them to hire a new employee and um, business grows. 50% of our clients are women, 63% are minorities, and 76% are low to moderate income entrepreneurs. 34% of our clients are startup businesses, and that means that they're less than a year old. Um, I think about 12% are zero to six months. Uh, this picture here is a, a nice guy in, in Springfield who runs the World Peace Taxi Company. We made him a loan to help buy the taxi. Um, this is a, a, an outdated map, I'll let you know, of our remote lending partners throughout our, our territory. We now have um, a SBDC, a small business development uh, company, um, that is based in Danville. And that's where people in this region right now would go to close loans. People wouldn't have to drive to Chicago to actually close the loan, although our loan officers would work with uh, business owners. We're hoping to get... Uh, the SBDC that's based in Champaign to be one of our remote lending partners also. And we are always looking, we would love to have somebody in Urbana also. Uh, this is sort of a nice uh, story. These um, three were uh, immigrants from Argentina and they were missing empanadas. And so they came to us and we helped finance their food truck. And so 5411 Empanadas was born. 5411 is the city and country code of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, and so they were successful, and then now they have opened a brick and mortar restaurant in Chicago also. Um, some details about our loan products. Um, they're only for business loans, not for consumer debt, not for nonprofits. Um, we make individual loans, not the group lending model, like I mentioned, with terms between six months and 72 months. Um, uh, term loans up to $50,000. Startup businesses up to $20,000. The average loan repays in 18 to 20 months. Um, the, the loans that we make, we, we try to make sure that um, it's right-sized for the needs of the client. Sometimes people come in and they want, you know, $25,000 for something that when they work with the loan officer, they really figure out right now what their needs are is to have $8,000 loan. And then we will refinance as, you know, when they've paid it down by 50%, we'll refinance. But we don't want to saddle anybody with more debt than they can really handle at the time, than they really need. If they need it for inventory, you don't want to have a loan longer than 12 months because you want to have the business discipline to be able to turn the inventory to pay for the loan. And so we keep working with the clients to make sure they're not getting too indebted because ultimately we want the businesses to succeed. We're not a for-profit organization, so we spend a lot of time making sure that the best interests of the business are, are uh, thought of and not just the best interests of Axion. Um, we provide um, 
uh, interest rates between 11 and 18 percent, depending on the tier structure. The, the, um, it's a tier-based lending based on credit risk. Um, we do um, have a special disaster loan fund right now um, for businesses that um, suffered from the storms in last fall that happened. And we have a, um, a bank partner who put up some money for us that we could lend out at three and a quarter percent. So if you happen to know any businesses that suffered some damage from the storms last fall, we have some money that we could help get them back on their feet with the, um, their business back on their feet. Um, I was referring to it, but financial education is really a very big part of our process. A loan officer will work with somebody. I mean, we really, for every loan that we make, we work with eight people. And are you having trouble hearing me? Anybody? We have um, eight, eight people who call us, work with a loan officer, and sometimes people have commingled their personal funds with their um, business funds, we help them separate that, we help them get a business plan, we, you know, there's all kinds of uh, assistance that we provide um, and then to get them basically loan ready and, um, and then um, and they can apply for a loan. So there's a lot of, in the buzzword is technical assistance it's called, but it's really you know, business development services. That's part of what makes it very expensive to do the work that we do because you know, banks aren't going to sit there and help you get into that position. So, oh, this is a nice story. Uh, this couple, um, he was formerly incarcerated and was having a lot of difficulty finding a job. And so he thought, well, I will create my own job. And he started with a snowplow company. And we provided the funds for him to be able to get the sn a, a couple snowplows on um, some trucks. And then he thought, well, you know, it does what am I going to do when it's not snowing? It snows a lot in Chicago, but what am I going to do? And so we helped him buy some more trucks, and then he has a lawn care service. And he now employs 27 people and year-round business, and you know he just really turned his life around, and we are happy to be a part of that. Um, so this is a little bit of the, the boring, what, do, what does a business need? I wasn't quite sure what you all wanted to hear about the way we do our work, so maybe I'll skim through this and we'll open it up to some question and answers pretty, pretty quickly. Um, when, when we look at evaluating whether or not somebody is going to get a small business loan from us or a micro loan, we look at the cash flow. They need to be able to pay back the loan. It doesn't have to be from the business because a lot of our our clients are currently working in other jobs and they're starting to create a small business out of a hobby. You know, somebody who makes jewelry wants to take it around to the summer fairs or something like that. So what we look at is uh, whether or not that person from other income sources could repay the loan while they get that business going. Um, we do look at uh, credit, um, the credit score, but there is not a minimum credit score. You can have damaged credit or no credit at all. A lot of immigrants don't have a credit history and we help them build that. Um, and you can't currently be in foreclosure, but if you've had a bankruptcy or, or have had a foreclosure, that's fine. We'll help you after, after that's sort of put to bed. We'll help people rebuild their, their credit history. Um, we do look at collateral, but we take very, uh, uh, very unusual collateral, I'll say, and, and we don't require exact um, large amounts of collateral. I mean, we have had some un unusual things. You know, we'll take little boats, houseboats in rivers, you know. We, we've done lots and lots of things, and really it's about having skin in the game. It's not necessarily about being able to liquidate the asset to pay for it if they have trouble paying the loan back. Um, and we obviously look at the character of the individual, uh, look at their capitalization. Have they put their own money or their own resources into a business that they've been working on? And then market conditions. We always want to know that somebody has some experience in the thing that they want to do. Somebody wants to buy a franchise. Well, have they, have they you know, worked in food service before? I mean, do they have some sort of ability to manage the business that they're interested in creating? So we look at all of those types of things. Um, and then financing options that are out there for uh, small businesses, you know, conventional banking, that's typically not an option because of what I talked about before, where they just don't lend below $100,000. Small business administration loans, 
family and friends, maybe, investors if you're lucky, uh, asset-based lenders, leasing, and nonprofit loan funds like we are. Um, uh, this is all very technical. <laughs> um, I think I've gone through a lot of those things. Maybe I will um, open it up to questions. Um, this is a Big Shoulders Coffee brew, uh, roaster and men, uh, brewer in, San, in not San Francisco, in Chicago. And the future of the industry, I mean, it really... Um, the industry hasn't evolved that much in the past, in the first 20 years that was, it was in the U.S. But in the past five years, it's really taken off. Um, there, I mean, when I say it hasn't really evolved much, what I really mean is that, you know, 15 years ago, there were about a dozen micro lenders across the country that made more than 100 loans a year. Today, there's still about a dozen who make more than 100, year, 100 loans a year. Um, and except for us, so we've been growing at you know, 20, 25% year over year uh, in the past five years. Some of that really honestly was the economic crisis and downturn. The, the government had some money they, for stimulus. They wanted to create jobs, but they didn't really know how to create jobs. So they found effective organizations like ours to give us some money to be able to get it out on the street and it's a very, very efficient use of the funds. So that was one of the ways in which the industry, or Acción at least, has been, has been taking off. So maybe we'll just open it up to some questions because, you know, there's so many angles that you might want to uh, talk about, you know, micro lending in the U.S. or in Illinois. Um, well, I bounced a question off earlier, so I won't do that one, actually, unless there's time at the end. But um, how do you, uh, what is your capitalization? You just mentioned that you got stimulus funds, and I also talked to you, you said you get some bank, banking money because this is, you're not competing with them. These aren't people that they would normally loan to. But So how does your capitalization work? Uh, and what about your figures on return on, on the loans and things like that? Well, um, for, I'll just the, the address the funding one first. Um, we get 30% of the cost of providing the loans is covered by our interest rates and fees. Um, and then the, the rest of it is made up by subsidy and that is private foundations or um, businesses or government sources. Um, so the, the Department of uh, Commerce and Economic Opportunity in Illinois and um, the SBA, some, some federal sources of funds um, have provided loan capital and general operating. The financial institutions See us both, they are a referral part of, partner of ours. We get many, many, a third of our uh, loans of people that call us are generated by referrals from small business bankers. What we encourage them to do is not to say no, to say Axion. Because when, and a lot of those people, they, they're just stuck by whatever the standards are that are been, have been put in place. But these small business bankers, they really do want to help. They're just not allowed to because it's not profitable. You have to have a 760 credit score. That's a very good credit score. Not a lot of people have it. And, and so it's just, they're just not able to do it. So then they will refer them to our loan officers. Separate from that, um, the banks are also in a position to be, they're regulated and they have to comply with the Community Reinvestment Act. So they are monitored and have to get CRA credit. Some of that is, are you lending in your community that you have the banks? And so they, or supporting an organization that does. And so they will make contributions to us, in part to support us out of, you know, because they think it's a really good thing to do. They see that they can't address it. Um, and so they'll provide us money. Another thing that they'll do is sometimes they will purchase a loan portfolio from us in their areas, and so they will pay us back the principal. We maintain the relationship with the client, and they continue to pay us, and yet the, the bank has taken on all the risk of the loan, and we're able to take that principal and loan it back to somebody else. So it, it makes it a very sort of efficient process. We do that with about, you know, really only a few, like 4% of our loan portfolio. We would like to do that more. 
Um, so, so the financial institutions, and then, and then fa foundations that really want to uh, support the efforts because they see it as workforce development. They see it as an efficient use of uh, community economic development. And then um, you asked about the um, return, I guess. We have a 5% net charge-off rate. So when the, the, which is a very, very good considering the profile of a lot of our clients. But we get, you know, it's, I don't know if it's because we're often the lender of last resort, we finally gave somebody the chance. I mean, we're the, the first people people pay. Another question? Oh yes, I'm sorry. So when somebody can't pay their loan, after you know, 90 days or so, we write it off and assume that that's not gonna be collectible. Now, sometimes people you know, get back on their feet and then they start paying it, and so then it's not the whole amount that we charge if we collect a little bit of that back. So that's what I mean by the net, you know, when, we, when we lose the money, when, when somebody either goes you know, out of business or they just fail to pay. It doesn't happen very often, but you know, it's about 5%. You'd expect it to be much higher, considering. Uh, I'm curious, uh, do you have a sort of a model that sits about you, you, You're obviously, you're making loans to, small loans to deserving people who have a good business plan and, and so on, but do you have a, a, is there kind of a larger model that you're aiming to help certain groups or help certain communities or, or certain people that fit a certain profile? I mean, like the, the microfinance loans around the world, as you uh -huh. pointed out, like 80, it drifts into a way, may 80% of the clients will be women, and, and you can make the argument, as you've heard many times, I suppose, women tend to be more responsible once they start making money. They educate their kids, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah, well, 50% of our loans do go to women, and that's both in terms of uh, the number of loans and the dollar amount of the loans. Um, uh, except in one little band, There's, there was a little, a little peak, it's like two points higher in, in the $12,500 to $25,000 range, and we dug down into those numbers a little bit and figured out it was because of more men had transportation businesses and they were getting the loans to buy vehicles. And so, as a, you know, so, it, so it skewed a little bit higher, but mostly they're 50-50. Um, our target market, I mean, we will make a loan to anybody, any small business owner who um, can't access a other source of capital. So that's one big thing. However, our target market is uh, low-income individuals, um, African Americans, and Hispanics. And so we have to be, to be a CDFI, the Certified Development um, Financial Institution, um, the Community Development Financial Institution, um, we have to have 60% of our loans go to some combination of that within that target market. We have 77% go into those target markets. Um, so we don't preclude anybody, but we do, you know, often the low credit scores are often correlated with uh, African American or Hispanic communities in urban settings. Um, so. So yes and no, we are open to everybody, but there's a target. You talked a little bit about um, that it seems unlikely to proceed without the continuing subsidy, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering if you can speak to that issue a little in terms of, um, and I'll follow up to the earlier question is, as you get money from the SBA and others, is that pass through loans or they're handing over the assets to you? And then to some degree, um, as you continue, are the loans that are being paid back then going out again and you're growing, you said you're growing 25% year over year, mm -hmm. is that the reason or, uh, and then ultimately, I mean, I have 20 questions, but <laughs> <laughs> at this point, if I can um, remember <laughs> as the, do you see the, the model as um, reproducible, I guess, or is the, um, the best scenario for, for example, Champaign County to ally with you and become uh, whatever you called your partners? Well, um, where to begin? <laughs> um, the SBA provides us money that we lend out, and then we repay that at a lower interest rate. Um, 
and they provide us a small subsidy for uh, our operating expenses. The, the DCEO, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, provided us a large grant that, we, that had uh, conditions to it. We had to lend it out, and then as it came back in, re-lend it out. We were able to keep a percentage of it to cover the costs, but we had to lend it all out at a four and a quarter percent interest rate. And then at, the, at a certain point in time, I think at the end of this year, it will all unrestrict, and then will become money that we lend out and support our organization with. So it's a combination of different, different sources. We have a, a revolving loan fund that the federal government helped us set up that is only for loan capital. None of it can be used for our operating expenses except for the interest rate that, that comes in, the income from that. So it's a hodgepodge of sort of things. Some, from a subsidy point of view, I mean, we hope to get to 40% self-sufficiency, but that's a tricky thing because, you know, you could easily jack up the interest rate. You could easily make your um, loan terms much longer so that people are, owe you more interest over time. And we, the average loan term now is 18 months. So even when somebody has, you know, because of their credit score, a 15% interest rate, if it's 18 months, it's a, it's a smaller amount than if we were, you know, obviously doing it to 72 months. And so, um, so there are ways that we could lengthen it, we could jack up the interest rates, we could charge more, but we feel like, you know, we want to get to the self-sufficiency of 40%, that's sort of the target for CDFIs. Um, in other ways, we're looking at technological um, improvements so that we can lower the cost that we have for providing the loan and the technical assistance. Um, you may have to ask the rest of your question. I've forgotten it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes? How active have you been in East Central Illinois and specifically in Champaign County? Um, we expanded in 2012 into the f full state of Illinois, um, and so and anybody is eligible throughout the state of Illinois, and that was just since 2000, July, I think, of 2012, and that was the same time that we increased our, average, our maximum loan size from $25,000 to $50,000 to try to close the gap in the market from what the banks can do and what we can do. But of course, there's a lot more concentration risk for us when we do that. And so we have to sort of slowly, we would hope one, time, one day to get up to like fully close that gap, but we wanna make sure that we do it prudently and, and don't suddenly have huge loss rates just because of you know, one or two loans, so. Uh, <clears throat> could you say just a little bit more about the uh, for-profit lenders that are in this same market? You mentioned the banks, but there must be a large number of uh, small profit lenders, pay payday loans, I see them up north of town here. Oh, I've always kind of wondered about them, but what is your relationship to them? And uh, is there any Federal Reserve uh, regulation of this uh, market? I mean, that uh, loans uh, that are smaller than what banks usually yeah. make. Well, um, we are not regulated as a not-for-profit organization, at least not for the same kind of banking regulations. Um, there are standards that we have to adhere to to be a CDFI and to be a, a SBA micro-lending intermediary, those kinds of things from uh, organizational governance and balance sheet ratios and things like that, but we're not regulated per se. Um, we do not have any relationship with the payday lenders. Um, you know, and I, I don't know how they're regulated. I should probably know that, but I, I don't, so I don't want to really speak to that. Um, they, um, I see. Okay, well, thank you. Um, now, they charge very high interest rates, um, and they um, don't typically report to credit agencies so they're not helping anybody repair their credit. Um, and often they, they don't provide any financial education about whether or not somebody should take out a loan. Um, 
sometimes that saying no to people can be the, the, the best thing for them. It sounds a little paternalistic, I suppose, but you know, to help somebody not take on debt that would actually harm them uh, because their business model, they just don't really have the experience or it's not, they, they're not going to be able to pay it back. We would be, we would be remiss in, in helping them in that way, so we provide them other services. So we're not, so a for-profit, you know, if you're, if you're willing to take the money at this rate, their interest is not aligned with yours, really. So um, we think of them as maybe a piece of the puzzle because ultimately there's probably a situation for, for any client to be able to make, have it make sense at one time or another. And, and, and where I'm going with this is, you know, ultimately the most expensive capital is the capital that you cannot get. Right? So because of the opportunity cost. And you know, if, imagine there's a big uh, uh, homecoming football game down here and somebody has a little food cart and they want to stock it with some inventory that they're going to sell out over the, the uh, homecoming weekend. And they'll be able to repay the loan very quickly. So even if a payday lender were to be giving them a super high interest loan, it might make sense. They don't have time to wait for the week or two or three weeks that an Axion loan would cost to get an inventory loan. Whereas, you know, if you could get it tomorrow, even if it's a 50% interest rate, maybe that's fine if you're going to repay it, you know, in three days. So maybe there's a role for the payday lenders. I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to grant them that, but I'm not sure that it's not ripe for, you know, a lot of exploitation and um, some financial sort of um, exploitation, really, sort of how I see it. Yeah, so, and um, the other thing that, you know, some other for-profit lenders that are out there are some online lenders that are coming about. Um, there's, some, there's one called Cabbage, and they specialize in people who have eBay businesses, and maybe you want to finance your, um, you know, your inventory for that, and they, will, they, under, they have access to your uh, PayPal and your eBay accounts, and then you can sort of make a loan based against your future sales. But those are very high, expensive uh, rates as well. There's uh, several in that space, and so they are, probably the right thing for some people at some time, but they don't have um, the same kind of business education or um, any tolerance for uh, poor damaged credit or um, unusual collateral. So, does that answer your question? Good. I was wondering if, <clears throat> excuse me, I was wondering if you partner with any local business incubation um, uh, organizations and if you do, how in depth is your cooperation with those organizations? We we don't really have any formal partnerships um, with uh, business incubators. We certainly have a network and refer people out. So um, in Chicago, there's an incubator called 1871, or there's one uh, called ICNC. And so our loan officers will, you know, if it's right for the client, whether before or after getting a loan, they will refer them out, and then sometimes they refer. So we're, we're more friends, but it's not a formalized partnership. Um, one thing I'd, I'd like to share with you is something about, about the industry that I neglected to share before, and that is, um, you know, we, we would love to put ourselves out of business, really. You know, if we could solve this problem, that would be fine with us. That's the beauty of being in a nonprofit. Um, and we didn't think it was a very good thing that we represented 90% of the microlending activity in Illinois, and particularly in Chicago, where 85% of the businesses in Illinois are in the Chicago metro area. Um, and so, and then, and also, we had coupled that with the sense that we only tapped 10% of the demand or solved 10% of the demand. So we developed a partnership with the City of Chicago, the Chicago Community Trust, and Citibank to train other microlenders. And so people thought, why would you want to do that? You're training your competition. I thought, well, you know, there's plenty of work to go around here, first of all. But also, we can reach different, different markets. So we trained the Women's Business Development Center and also Community Neighborhood Initiative on the south side of Chicago to become microlenders themselves. 
because you know, after all, we've had, we've had some bumps in the road, and we've learned a lot, and we've really learned how to do this well. At first, you know, it's very easy to make loans based on somebody's story or their good character. They're very friendly. You want to make it work, but it's not easy to make really good quality loans. And the history of micro lending in the states is littered with. Uh, people who've had to face that reality, where they got a pot of money, maybe they had a million dollars granted to them from some generous person, and they lent it out, but they didn't have a low net charge-off rate. They had 30, 40, 50 percent charge-offs. And then, so pretty soon, your loan capital is whittled down to nothing and you go bankrupt. And there have been a lot of organizations that have closed that way. So we wanted to train people who could do it the right way, who could use all of the rigor of the traditional small business lenders, looking at collateral, looking at the credit score, and looking at the use of funds, all of that kind of thing. Combine that with the character-based lending, and then that's sort of now the, the Axion model. And we have just been tapped to um, train five other organizations across the country that are not in the Axion footprint by a national retailer who is yet to be, I, it's still under wraps, I'm not allowed to say who it is, but there's somebody who's putting up the funds for Axion to train these other organizations across the country over the next couple years. And so, and they're going to be, they're putting up loan capital and having us do the training of them. And the idea is that we want this to be a scalable industry. I mean, it certainly is if we can find the subsidy and the good quality people to actually, people who are knowing what they're doing, um, making the loans. So that's kind of, that's something I'm quite proud of. Um, I actually have a question. Oh, what's your question? What percent of clients who come in looking for a loan do you actually end up sort of turning away or saying come back later when, when things are, you know, a little more stable or you have a better plan? Well, depending on the month, eight to ten people come to us for a loan for every one person that gets a loan, so 10 to 15 percent. Um, and so I, I would say about a, th a third of the people apply for a loan, um, and then um, and then a lot of those people, some same people come back. And of our loans, the 500 loans that we make this year, 25% of them will be people who are coming for another loan. And that's the most gratifying time, is when somebody comes to us with damaged credit, and then we help them rebuild, and then rebuild, and four or five loans later, they've grown their business to such a state that we can pass them back into the traditional you know, banking sector. And so that's, that's always a, a really nice, gratifying thing. Well, you know, um, if they if they don't have the the cash flow to be able to pay for the loan that they want, so that that's typically the reason. And because sometimes people say, you know, they come in and they want fifteen thousand dollars, but they just don't have the money to repay the the loan at the terms. And then so sometimes they will not actually f um, try; they'll withdraw rather than going through with it because they they don't want to you know, have a smaller loan, they feel like they can't get it. But most often what we do is we restructure the loan so to fit what they could pay. So maybe we do um, lower the amount, uh, get that to work with them to figure out, well, you know what, you're going to be doing this uh, small construction project to expand your facility. What if we stage it in such a way so that we do this first, then you can, you know, buy this new fry machine, and then so we try, we work with them a lot to make it work. So we really try to not get somebody to apply if they aren't really strong candidates. Um, but the loan committees will sometimes change the amount that they're going to get. That's really how it's handled. How much interest to charge a client? Um, it's it's really tier based. It's a risk scoring model. Um, so somebody with a um, you know the credit score in the top range, of a tier one would get the would el be eligible for the lowest interest rate because they are sort of the most credit worthy, the most likely to repay, and then sort of it goes from there basically. And then the very, very low special program ones, the ones with the state that where we have 
um, really lent out all the capital. That was at four and a quarter, but that was sort of a mandated thing. And really, almost anybody could um, qualify for that. So that was a really wonderful thing to be able to have. Anybody else? Could you say a little bit about um, what excuses Axiom from the banking regulations? I mean, you, I get your nonprofit, but um, do you know why you're? I mean, is it that you don't take deposits, or you know, it just seems like? Well, we don't take deposits. Right. That's a big part of it, and um, because we're a nonprofit and we're not making any money on this, like I said, I mean, we we cover thirty percent of our costs to do it, and we are sort of a business services organization as well. So. Um, that's why. Tell us the story of your biggest success. Ah. Um, well, have, has anybody heard of Protein Bar? It is a, sort of a, a, a fast, casual, healthy um, uh, food franchise that is, is out there. And um, we made some of the, the first loans to this gentleman, Matt Matos to um, start his little healthy protein drink, um, kind of like Jamba Juice, but healthier, um, in, in Chicago. And now they're franchised across the country. So that's sort of an exciting one. Mm -hmm.